Good morning, folks. I'd like to welcome everyone <clears throat> to the Church of the Firstborn for our morning devotion. I chose this morning Romans chapter 6 for our morning devotion. Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin any live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planned together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. She obeyed in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness? But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered to you. Being then made free from sin, ye become the servants of righteousness. So, as you can see, just because you're saved and you're free from the old law 
doesn't mean that you can just do whatever you want and commit sin. Are you saved? Yeah, but don't go out there living like the devil. Because as you just seen, to whom you'll serve, you're his servant. So be careful. Yes, I believe in once saved, always saved. But it doesn't give me a license to go out here and commit sin. So if somebody told, oh, you're saved, you're okay now, don't worry about it. You better worry about it. Because see, one thing I know, because I was saved at an early age, the Lord will whip you. And trust me, you don't want the Lord to whip you. His whippings have a long lasting effect. <laughs> okay? I guarantee you once you get whipped, you won't do it again. See, the Lord can cause you all kinds of problems in your life till you repent of your sins. Yes, he loves you. But we're supposed to live for him, not the devil. Okay? So think about these things. Anybody that tells you, oh, you're okay, you're saved now. Listen, you've been lied to. You need to read the word of God, and I suggest that you read the book of Romans. The book of Romans is good for those that are new in Christ Jesus. Like I've told people, yes, the King James, I believe to be the word of God preserved forever. Many men and women of the faith have died for that book. But there are many resources out there that can help you understand the King James Bible. It's the most powerful version of the Bible. But there are also, I recommend this one. It's a good version. All right. Or an NIV. But you need to read the word and stay in the word. Okay. You need to read the word of God. It's your weapon, too, against Satan. Okay? It's a spiritual weapon, but it's also, okay, a how-to. It'll show you how to live your life, too. It doesn't just reveal your fault. But it tells you what to do, too, if people will just read it every day. You know, there was a time when I was a young, I could read 10 chapters a day, no problem. 
I read one or two a day now because I try to absorb what I'm reading. Because I have a desire since I was a young and to learn God's word. Because I want to live for him. Not get out here, which, yes, I've failed. I've failed. We all fail. We're not perfect. I fell away for a time, but it wasn't long. I dusted my breeches off and I rededicated my life to serving the Lord and I ain't been the same since. But you need to get into the word of God and learn. Hi, Barry. Good to see you, brother. But trust me. The Word of God will help you. You know, you just got to trust God. And one thing I recommend is pray before you read it. Pray that God give you the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of his word I have for years. Soon to be 59 years old. I got saved at nine years old. I've read the Bible for 50 years and studied the word of God for 50 years. It's that important, folks. And people say uh, all the time, I just can't understand the Bible. It's hard. No, it ain't. Listen, you've got Bible dictionaries. You've got commentaries. And one of the commentaries I like to use is Matthew Henry. Once in a while. But I rarely use it because God himself has taught me. Most everything that I know has come directly from him. And if I had a question and I didn't understand something, I pray to the good Lord for the understanding of it. And before I wake, open my eyes, I got the meaning of that verse. He's always showed me things. And he will you too, if you let him. But it's not okay just to go on and continue sinning, okay, I mean, it's not, yeah, we have an advocate with the Father for the forgiveness of sins, but after yes, forgiveness, try not to do it again, because he will whip you, I've been there, But that's all I have today. I love you all out there. Hope you have a great day. May God bless you and take care of you. Hopefully I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye for now.